If I said that Killa's chest armor was arguably the best overall piece of armor in the entire game, that probably wouldn't surprise you guys. But if I said that the trooper was a very, very, very close second, maybe that one would? Maybe not. But some of the information in this video might surprise you. I've seen countless PMCs in Tarkov making the repeated mistake of spending money on body armor that would better serve them in a vastly different way. I believe if they had the knowledge that I'm going to try to provide you in this video, they'd get significantly more bang for their ruble by simply looking to something they hadn't considered. This video is going to teach everyone how armor works. Building on this, in a couple days, I'm going to release a body armor tier list. Hopefully, Pestily ends up doing the same thing because I'd actually love to see how we end up comparing our takes. I mean, it's Pest. I'm sure he's gonna do it, right? So there are different materials that make up different kinds of armor, and movement penalties that armor possesses, and weight to consider, and why weight, especially now in 12.12, .12, matters, just for starters. Not to mention repairing of armor, and if it's even repairable at all, and all of the costs associated with that, there's, there's a lot here. But before we get into everything, first, I need to pay the bills. We'll do a sponsored segment, and when I get back, we'll tackle this bear. Okay? Okay. Six months ago, I said that I absolutely loved the web browser Opera GX and that I would continue to use it, and I dared you to challenge me on it. And yet, here I am, still using Opera GX. And today, we get an opportunity to talk about some of the features. How about custom animated wallpapers, where you can simply go up to clicking the easy setup section here, click on get more wallpapers, select animated, choose the wallpaper you like, this one looks interesting, and simply click add to Opera. Boom, not too shabby. How about having integrated social media channels? I can check out Twitter anytime I like simply by clicking on this icon. Or after linking it, I can click on Discord and there is my full Discord server. Available to be browsed and read and talk to all the boys. What up, y'all? Or how about Opera's quick import tool where you can simply click on the settings, scroll down to synchronization, and click on import bookmarks and settings. Go. Done. It's that easy. And if you're wondering how to get extensions, you simply click on this little box icon, go to get more extensions, and in the Opera add-on store, you can grab whatever add-ons you like. And for people that want Chrome extensions, all you have to do is click on this one. Install Chrome extensions. Add to Opera. And now every single Chrome extension that exists in the Chrome web store is something that you can add to Opera and will work just fine. And that's only scratching the surface of the features that Opera has. My favorite one happens to be the pop-out viewer. Simply go to whatever stream or video of any kind that you are watching on any website that uses this browser, and you only have to click on this little icon right here to pop the video out, allowing you to minimize this and go back to doing whatever else that you'd rather be doing. And you can resize it to what any size you like. And Opera GX is absolutely free. All you have to do is click on the link in the description below, and it will take you to a place where you can download Opera GX for yourself. Give it a try. Because I absolutely love it. This isn't even a meme. Like, I'm not even doing this because of the sponsorship. I'm genuinely saying I really, really enjoy this browser. I use it every single day on stream. Come check it. It's up every single day. I love it. And I once again want to thank the people over at Opera GX for giving me an opportunity to work with them for yet another month. Thank you guys so very much. To understand how body armor works in Tarkov, you have to understand a couple of really basic things. Armor covers certain body parts. If you hover your mouse over the little carrot on the inspect screen, it will show you which regions of the body it protects. There are three regions of protection. The chest, which Tarkov calls the thorax, the stomach, and your arms. If the armor doesn't protect one or two or three of these regions, because maybe you're not wearing body armor, but if it only protects one, then you'll only see one on the list. They'll, you'll end up seeing a carrot if there's more than one. If you ever have a question about which body region the armor ends up protecting, then you would go to the inspect screen and this is where you would look. Armor is comprised of two main statistics. The first is the armor's class, and the second is the armor's durability. The class of the armor is provided to us numerically. Tarkov has armor that ranges from class 2 to class 6. These class ratings use the Russian Gost standard which gives a rating based on the ability for the armor to stop a certain type of projectile. The higher the rating, the bigger the bullet it can stop. In Tarkov, that means that the higher class of armor, the more armor penetration a bullet will need in order to get through it. So in Tarkov terms, what that means is in order to be able to penetrate a higher tier of armor, you need a higher level of penetration on the bullets that you are firing at it. You guys still with me? Okay, penetrating the armor is based on a factor of 10. To put this another way, if you had class three armor, you would want at least 30 pen in order to realistically and reliably 
almost always penetrate that armor. So to put this another way, class 3 armor, you would want 30 pen plus, class 4 armor, 40 penetration plus, class 5, 50 penetration plus, etc. Durability on the armor is provided as a numerical value along the bottom of the icon. This is presented as current durability over maximum durability. Armor that's scuffed, meaning that it's lost some of the durability value, can be repaired at a trader of your choosing that will have different pricing for different levels of repair. And then on this repair screen, it's kind of read as follows. So looking at this trooper armor, for instance, if you were to fully repair this armor, Prapper says that he'll be able to repair it back to 83.98 durability refilling 30.7 points of damage for 31,000 rubles. If we were to choose Skier, he charges you another 30,000, so 60k, and he'll repair it to 84.15, and then Mechanic, for another 30,000, 91k, will repair it back to 84.41. So Prapper obviously seems like the best bet here, and in most cases, should the person end up repairing your gear, or you need to repair your gear every time, it should always be Prapper because Mechanic and Skier cost just way too much for an extra half to full point of durability. There's no sense in that at all. Should, for whatever reason, you also be on the verge of broke, or for whatever reason you don't want to repair an armor to the maximum available, a lot of people don't know this, but there's also this little slider that you can move up or down to repair it back to, like, a target amount of durability instead. Although I have no idea why you would really ever want to do that. Durability of armor is based on a percentage-style system. At 85 out of 85 durability, this trooper armor will give the maximum amount of protection available against any ammo shot at it. And as long as the ammo has below 40 pen, it's got a very good chance of stopping it, since the trooper is class 4. But what happens when the armor gets hit? So when the armor's hit, depending on how damaging the ammunition being used is, the armor will lose some durability and its protection will be reduced by that equivalent percentage of loss. So if we're, again, using the 85 out of 85 trooper, which is at 100% durability, 100% protection, the trooper at 53.85 would be 62.4% effective. When you repair that armor, the max durability value drops a little bit. Instead of it being 85 out of 85, which would be 100% protection, this repaired armor is 82.4 out of 82.4, but the level of protection equivalent is 82.4 out of 85, or 97% effective. Hopefully that made sense. Over time, the max protection amount continues to go down as the armor takes hits and it gets repeatedly repaired. Eventually, it gets to the point where it needs to be sold to a vendor or just plain old deleted by the next person that inherits it or you send it to a fence or whatever. So how much durability gets lost when you get hit? Well. In that case, what we have to do is we have to talk some nerd shit. The higher pen versus the armor level of the armor, the more damage that the armor will take. This is then multiplied against an armor damage percent, which you can see in the various Tarkov ammo tables. So a percentage of that damage is transferred into armor damage. And the armor's destructibility, which is based on the type of material the armor is made of. But even if the bullets are absolute trash, the armor will still take a minimum of one point of damage per round that hits it. If a round penetrates the armor, it does about 10 to 15% less durability damage to the armor because the round went through the armor and hit you at least as a portion of that damage instead. Now the destructibility stat of the armor is hidden. You can find it on the Tarkov Wiki and all kinds of other different various websites. But if we went from worst to best, the destructibility stat for ceramic is 0.8, steel 0.7, aluminum 0.6, titanium 0.55, combined materials 0.5, uh, ultra high molecular weight polythylene, which we just call poly, is 0.45, and aramid is 0.25. And getting into the math doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this video, but the main idea here is the smaller the destructibility stat, the less damage that gets applied to the armor. To put it another way, if there were two armors identical in stats, but one was made from ceramic, and the other was made from poly, the ceramic armor would take nearly two times more durability loss per bullet that hit it. Now, once you have scuffed armor, then it obviously needs to be repaired. Repair obviously has a cost associated with it. The armor that repairs the best is steel, with an average durability loss of only 2.4% when it is repaired. Things like the TV-110, the Corand, and the Slick. The armor that repairs the absolute worst is ceramic, which is like the Juke 6A, the Gazelle, and the 6B-23, which loses approximately 23.4% of its repaired durability. In order of most repairable to least repairable, the materials order is as follows. Steel is first, then poly, then aramid, aluminum, titan, combined materials, and lastly, ceramic. 
which is the worst. Now, if you notice, there's a little bit of a trend here. Armor made from poly is both near the top in terms of shrugging off damage taken, as well as being very repairable. This means that things like the Trooper at class four, the CPC Mod 2 Carrier at class five, and Killa's chest armor are among the best armors in the entire game when you look at cost of ownership versus protection. And then lastly, there is weight to consider. In 12.12 .12 Tarkov, weight matters when it comes to things like movement speed and especially this new inertia system. It's tough to move when you're heavy, and if you're in the yellow or red weight bands, you can no longer move silent. Poly material armor also happens to be among the lightest armors in the game as well. The heaviest poly armor in the game is the tier 6 hex grid at 7.7 .7 kilograms, followed by Killa's chest armor at 7.5. Poly armors are almost the entire top of the list for the lightest armors in the game, regardless of whether or not they are tier three, four, five, or six. The overall heaviest are combined materials, titanium and ceramic, and the heaviest combined materials obviously being the Zabralo Fort armor, which comes in a nice, robust 20 kilograms. So the go-to armors for class three, the TV-110, the 6B5 Yule and the Zhuk 3 Press Armor. For Class 4, the Highcom Trooper, which is likely the second overall best armor in the game for cost versus durability versus repairability versus weight. And since you can still get it easily on the flea for about 100k, it might actually edge out Killa's armor because you can still get it on the flea market. It makes it abundant. You can use it all the time. None of the other armors even come close because you can't buy a hex grid and you can't buy Killa's armor on the flea. Also at tier 4 is the MMAC, which is one of the new armors introduced with the Christmas event, and the ANA Tactical M1 and M2 chest rigs. For class 5, the Ars Arma CPC Mod 2, which again is another poly, the Corind, the TAC Tech, and Killa's tan armor. Between the Mod 2 and the Tac Tech, they likely tie for the best tier 5 chest rigs, and Killa's armor is likely overall the best armor in the entire game for the same reason as the Trooper, but again, the Trooper is more accessible. For class 6, the Hex Grid and Tagilla's M Bath, Tagilla's chest rig. The other rigs or other chest armors are too heavy or they're just awful to repair. Tagilla's chest rig weighs 7.8 kilograms and is made of titanium, which puts it in the middle of the road in repairability but it's a repairable and relatively light class six. The hex grid is made of poly and again is extremely good on materials. Now, if you notice, I didn't take into consideration things like arm armor presence or stomach armor presence. Because Killa's armor has stomach protection, it likely ends up being the overall best armor in the game, if you can get your hands on them. However, I will say that I am an advocate for still in the game having chest only armor being the best only. Durability loss when it comes to armor is done so in a way where the entire armor is just one big durability pool. There isn't separate durability amounts for arms and stomach regions and chest regions. It's all just one big set of durability. You can't really die from a blacked out arm unless obviously there's more damage transfer. Same goes for your stomach. However, the moment that your chest blacks out, for the most part, once that happens, you're done. If you have max durability available to you to cover your chest, it ends up saving your bacon more often than not, allowing you to either counterattack or run away and hide and use a surgical kit to replenish the areas of your body that got blacked out on your torso. But that's just my two cents. I've always been an advocate for chest-only armor being best. Also, chest-only armor tends to be lighter than all of the other options. And right now, in my opinion, you want to try and stay in green weight as much as you can. So there you go. A basic overview and recommendations with what to look for and why, backed by stats. If you guys have any feedback or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, I will see you gamers in Tarkov. See ya.